Hi, Bulldogs, and welcome back to another week of virtual music class with me, Mrs. Gutierrez. I hope you are having a great day, and I'm so happy that you joined me for music class today. Now, this week in Rotation 13, we are going to be talking about something that is very special to me, and it is all about the ballet, the Nutcracker. So this is my little Nutcracker. A Nutcracker looks like these. You've probably seen these in the stores before. And it has a little stick in the back. And when I move the stick, look at the Nutcracker's mouth. It opens and closes. Now, most of the time, they look like little soldiers like this. But some people have gotten pretty creative and made them look like different characters, too. So this is my little Nutcracker. So our lesson today is going to be about the ballet called the Nutcracker. Now, if you've been here before, then uh, you should know some stuff already about it because we usually talk about it every year. So the Nutcracker was written by a very famous composer named Tchaikovsky. Now, look at his name. It's super long. So we just go by his last name, which is also pretty long. But can you say Tchaikovsky? Try that. Tchaikovsky. And he is the composer of the Nutcracker. And a composer is somebody that writes the music for the show or the, the play or the musical or the concert. He is the composer of the Nutcracker. So he wrote all of the music that is played during the show. Now it says Tchaikovsky's ballet, The Nutcracker, is based on a story by German author E.T.A. Hoffman. So it's based already on a story written by Hoffman, but Tchaikovsky wrote music to it. In The Nutcracker, a Christmas present, a Nutcracker, comes to life as a handsome prince. He takes the young girl who received him as a present on some fantastic adventures. So here are some pictures um, from the actual ballet. So there's lots of dancers of the Sugar Plum Fairies, um, the, the Snow Princess. It's awesome. So here's some pictures. Here's the Nutcracker um, in a sword fight with the Mouse King, which we're, you're going to hear in a little bit who the Mouse King is. We don't like the Mouse King. All right. So before we get started, we're going to do a little dance. Now, I found this video. It is um, uh, one of the songs in the story of the Nutcracker written by Tchaikovsky. But somebody put a little dance to it. So I want you to stand up and make sure you have enough space to do the dance and uh this is the dance of the sugar plum fairy so let's go
<laughs> awesome job, boys and girls. And I forgot to mention that um, a ballet, there's no talking in a ballet. It is only dancing, no talking, no singing, only dancing. So the story is only told by the way that the dancers perform which is really cool, no speaking. Now, the Nutcracker always comes to San Antonio and performs downtown. I've seen the, the ballet a couple of times and it is the most coolest thing. Again, no singing or talking, just dancing. That's how they tell the story. So I'm gonna read you the book called The Nutcracker, okay? Christmas Eve, no other evening is so exciting and I'm sure you'll agree. Marie, who was seven years old, was eagerly awaiting the magic of Christmas Eve. She and her older brother, Fritz, had been listening to the comings and goings and strange noises from the living room all day. Fritz had even spied a dark, hunched man coming from the living room. This could only be their godfather, Papa Drossemeyer. At last, after a whole day of listening and waiting and nearly bursting with excitement, Marie and her brother were allowed into the living room. And what do you think they saw when they came through the door? Why, just the most beautiful, shining Christmas tree that ever was. Little candles twinkled on branches, and there were two little toys and candles and ornaments, too. Oh, how marvelous, Marie exclaimed. Fritz jumped up in the air and hollered, stupendous. And what was over here? A wooden horse for Fritz, who simply adored horses, and a whole new set of soldiers for his army. For Marie, there was a new doll. Marie immediately named her Clara, because no doll should have to go very long without a proper name. And the most beautiful dress in all the world with colored ribbons and buttons. And then Papa Drossemeyer came into the room with a splendid surprise, a wonderful castle with golden towers and sparkling windows. And there was a tiny Papa Drossemeyer, no taller than your finger, which appeared at the castle door, going out and going in again. The grown-ups oohed and awed over the castle. Marie, who was a polite little girl, thanked her godfather for the castle before going to play with her new doll. Marie was just was just bending over to pick up Clara when she spied a little man hiding under the lowest branches of the tree. Father, whom does this little man belong to? Marie asked. He is Nutcracker, and he belongs to everyone. Let me show you what he can do. Father picked up the odd-looking man. He put an almond between the little man's teeth, pulled down on the Nutcracker's short wooden ca uh, cape, and cracked. Pieces of shell fell away, and Father handed me the nut to Marie. Wonderful, she said. He is an adorable little man. Well, said Father, since you love him dearly already, I will place him in your keeping. Of course, you must share him with your brother Fritz. Oh, I will, said Marie, as she hugged the strange wooden man. Marie put only the softest and smallest nuts in the nutcracker's mouth. She did not want to ruin his big smile or his wide white teeth. So that's what this little lever is for. You put little almonds or you put like little um, nuts that have a hard shell and you put it in there and you go crack and it'll crack it open so you can eat them. Let me see, a voice demanded. Marie turned to see Fritz who grabbed Nutcracker from his sister's hand. He started feeding Nutcracker the very hardest nuts. Nutcracker's teeth gave in with a terrible crunch and three teeth popped out onto the floor. Poor Nutcracker. He looked so fine in his uniform and shiny black boots, but had a broken jaw. You give him back, Marie said. She took the nutcracker in her arms. You are a terrible monster, Fritz. I don't know why you would like such an ugly old thing anyway, said Fritz. Well, I do, Marie cried. I'm going to take care of him and make him better. She bandaged his broken jaw with a ribbon of silk from her new dress. Then she took her wounded nutcracker to the large glass cabinet in the living room where they kept their favorite dolls and toys. Marie looked at Clara. I'm sorry, Clara, she said, but Nutcracker is badly wounded, and I know you wouldn't mind giving up your bed to him. Now, will you? Clara didn't mind. Remember, Clara's the doll. 
Very good. Now rest well, Nutcracker. It is late. Papa Jossmeyer will fix your teeth and jaw tomorrow and you'll be good as new. Ooh, this is my favorite part. As Marie turned to go upstairs to bed, the tall grandfather clock chimed the midnight hour. Then the strangest thing happened. Marie heard strange squeakings and clatterings behind her. She spun around and could it be? Hundreds of mice were pouring out from under the sofa and chairs and from between the cracks in the doors. Then a terrible rumbling shook the floor and up came a giant mouse king with seven heads. And on those heads were seven gold crowns. Crowns. I've come for the nutcracker and he will be mine, he shouted. Nutcracker leaped from the glass cabinet, leading Fritz's toy soldiers. The army fought bravely, shooting gumdrop cannonballs at the awful mice. But the mouse king suddenly sprang at Nutcracker. Stay away from him, Marie shouted. She threw her left shoe into the fray and it hit the mouse king right on his many heads. He ran away with all the other mice. Well, Marie fainted right then and there. She couldn't believe what was going on. So she threw her shoe and hit the, hit the um, mouse king and he ran away. Marie awoke in her very own bed. Had it all been a dream? She looked up and saw Papa Drossemeyer smiling gently at her. I have something for you, my dear. And do you know what it was? Why, it was the Nutcracker. And he was mended. Mended means he was fixed. His teeth were in straight and his jaw worked perfectly. Marie hugged him tightly. She had tears in her eyes and she thanked her Papa Drossemeyer. That night, Marie couldn't sleep. Just after the clock chimed midnight, she heard strange sounds clanging and crashing from the living room. Then a terrible squeak, then a knock on the bedroom door, and then a voice crying, Marie, open the door, I have some wonderful news. Marie recognized the voice of the Nutcracker and let him in. I have defeated the Mouse King, Nutcracker exclaimed. It was you who gave me the courage to defeat that nasty creature. To thank you, I wish to give you these. He handed her seven tiny gold crowns. Marie clasped her hand with delight. I must tell you, dear Marie, that I am really a king, said Nutcracker, a king of the most wonderf wondrous land in the world, Toyland. And now, will you join me as I travel to my kingdom to celebrate the happy occasion? Marie could think of nothing she'd rather do. So he really was a king. Marie followed Nutcracker to the front closet where he revealed a hidden ladder. Marie was just small enough to climb up the ladder and soon found herself standing in a sweet-smelling meadow. This is Candy Meadow, said Nutcracker. Now we will travel through all of Toyland and on our way to Mars Marzipan Castle in the City of Sweets. This is where I live. Oh, and the Toyland was marvelous. They passed through Almond and Raisin Gateway. They watched the charming ballet. They went on to Orange Brook and River Lemonade and past Gingerbread City on the Honey River. In each of these places, Marie saw the most amazing things. Houses and whole villages made of all manner of sweets and the friendliest people you could ever hope to meet. There were creatures of all kinds and they were dancing and laughing about in their merriest way. They finally came to a rose-colored lake. Nutcracker summoned a jeweled gondola pulled by dolphins to take them across the water. On and on, under a moonlit sky, they glided over the lake. There ahead lay the city of sweets and marzipan castle. When they arrived, what do you think Marie saw? Only the most beautiful houses, all made up of brightly colored candies, and a marketplace full of delicious sweets that made her mouth water. Nutcracker took Marie up to his castle, where she met all of the ladies of the house and the royal pages and such. Everyone was so nice that Marie decided that she would never leave. They had a wonderful meal of hundreds of candies and desserts, and then Marie started to yawn and rub her eyes. Can you blame her? She had been through quite a bit of excitement, to say the least, and she probably had she probably eaten a bit too much candy. Indeed, Marie did fall asleep to the sound of her beloved Nutcracker talking. And then she awoke where she was in her own bed. Oh, it just couldn't have been a dream, she said sadly. 
But then, but what was in her hand was the seven tiny gold crowns that the nutcracker had given her. Many, many years later, Marie sat in the living room gazing at her old beloved nutcracker in the glass cabinet. Oh, nutcracker, she said, if only you are really alive, I would love you just as you are. I don't think you're ugly. I think you're handsome. Just then, Marie's mother came in. Sit up like a proper lady, she said. Papa Drossemeyer's nephew is here to meet you. Who, said Marie, sitting up very straight indeed. In came a handsome young man. He smiled, walked over, and took Marie's hand in, her, in his own. Oh, sweet Marie, he said, I am really alive. You were kind and gentle enough to say that you would love me just as I am. So here I am. Now, would you do me the honor of becoming my wife and queen of all Toyland? Nutcracker, is it really you? whispered Marie. Of course I will. Ah, dear children, who can see how such things would happen in this world and in the world of toys and dreams? Who can say how love creates its own magic? And who can say whether Queen Marie and her beloved King Nutcracker rule over Toyland to this very day? If you have the eyes and heart for it, dear children, perhaps someday you will visit Toyland and then you can say. So that is the story of the Nutcracker. Awesome story. All right, boys and girls, now what we're going to do, we're going to do something called the Nutcracker March. Now, this is one of the songs from the Nutcracker. Now, you're going to see three different pictures. So you're going to see a little soldier, a little puppet. Ooh, those are the little puppets with the strings. Marionettes is what they're called, marionettes. And then you're going to see the little mice. Okay? So you are going to be acting out what each one um, does. So when you have the nutcrackers, you're going to move like a soldier like this. You're going to move like a soldier like this. Okay? When you see the puppets, you're going to move like a, a puppet, like a marionette. Okay? When you see the mice, you're going to sneak around. Now, there is a part where um, all three of them are, it's circled. You can choose whatever one to do at that, at that part, okay? Are you ready? This is called the Nutcracker March. Here we go. Soldier. Puppets. We're going to do it again, soldier. Puppets. Soldiers. Mice. Soldiers. Now pick what you want to do and be a mouse again. Soldier. Puppets. Soldiers again. Puppets. Mice, scurry around, scurry around the room. Again. Scurry. Soldier. Puppet. Soldier again. Puppet. Soldier. Mice. Soldier, and pick one. I'm going to be a mouse. Again. Soldier, puppet, soldier, puppet. Alright, 
good job. If you want to do that again, then you just you can just pause this video and rewind it, okay? All right, do not forget your exit ticket. Um, I did send out an email saying how important it is that you do your exit tickets every week because they are for a grade. Okay, so please make sure that you go and do your exit tickets. One simple question. That's all it is. One simple question. All right, let's sing our goodbye song. So long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. I said so long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. It's been great to play and sing together. And now it's time to say goodbye. So long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, there's gonna be a Nutcracker coloring sheet um, posted too. So make sure if you color it um, to send me a picture. It's not mandatory. You do not have to do it, but I would love to see all of your different soldiers colored. Okay. See you next time.